Wedding celebrations, birthday, funerals or returning from trips are just a few occasions where a slideshow is the best option to share strong moments with family or friends. But selecting images is a step that takes us most of the time and can discourage us. Especially if you're short on time, quickly selecting the best images is crucial for the success of creating a slideshow. Hi, I'm Mathieu and in this tutorial I'll show you how to select images quickly and easily, allowing you to create slideshows in just a few minutes. If you like this video, please support our channel by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. And if you have specific needs related to your images, please let them in the comments below and uh, we'll answer them in upcoming videos. Ready to break the slideshow rules? Let's dive in. To select our images, we'll use the Picto application, a universal photo organizing tool. The download link is in the description and you can try it free for 15 days. Once you've downloaded the software, you'll see this interface. And this is where the magic begins. First, you can add image sources such as folders, but also catalog types or Apple photos. I'm going to simply drag and drop an Apple photo library, as well as some folders that contain my images. Now that your images are in Picto, I'll introduce the various options available for quick selection, and the last one might astonish you. The first option is the classic search you're probably familiar with. However, Picto's uniqueness is the ability to compile all your photos in one place. This makes the classic search much more powerful and relevant. So let's say I want to create a slideshow from this trip in Iceland. I can use a strategy where I give some stars to the images I like. For example, let's give five stars to this one. And, uh, I can use search to find images taken with a tele lens because I want some birds too in my selection. So I'm going to go through all those images of birds. So this one has already five stars and maybe I'll add another one. Give it five stars. Now that I have annotated some images, I can simply go in my filter, filter for all the five star images, regardless of the lens, and create an album from that selection. And here I have my selection ready to be published. Furthermore, in Picto, you can use smart albums. Smart albums automatically create albums based on the rules or conditions that you set. This option allows you to create an album very quickly and automatically. So let's consider creating a slideshow from this trip to Reunion Island. I've started to annotate the images, giving them five stars, but now I want to create a selection based on those five star images, but I want to restrict myself to images of nature. In order to do that, I've created a smart album that has a few rules. The first one being the catalog being Iranian. The filter is for images with five stars. And the category of images is nature. And this is a category that is computed by AI. And here I have 14 matching versions. That I displayed right here and that are ready to be used as a slideshow. Panorama offers an innovative view of your photos as they are automatically sorted by themes like categories, photo styles, color harmonies, people in the images, light conditions. In this view, for example, I can easily access all my wildlife images, scan them quickly or open them for complete selection. Also for each image, I can activate the Find Similar, which will look in all my collection for images that 
are similar to the one that I've picked. And from here, of course, I can easily take any image and drag it to an album. The most innovative solution is conversational search. This feature works like a prompt where you describe the images you're looking for. This function can be combined with smart albums for more in-depth selection. So let's suppose I want to complete my Iceland slideshow with an image that contains houses with a red roof. It immediately finds them. And I can add it to my selection. Now let's put it into practice and create a slideshow together. For this, I'll create a new album, an empty one. And I'm going to use some filters that some ratings that I've already set on some images. So I will take those images that are five stars already. And then I'm going I'm going to panorama and um, I may want to take some images of uh, architecture that I have here. Maybe this one. And maybe check some for some more wildlife. Yeah, maybe this one. Let's add it too. And finally, I know that I would like to have some more puffin. So I'm using conversational search here to look for puffins, and I'm going to take this one. Let's verify what I have here, all the perfumes that it found. I'm going to add this one to my slideshow and uh, maybe I could try to have some sunset as well. In Iceland, preferably. I don't have uh, great sunset images, but that's okay. Um, what I could do is I could f finish with some... Oh, I know we had some camping pants. That was cool. So I'm going to take this image of the campsite. And here I am with my final selection. With my selection complete, I can now export it in JPEG format to my desktop and create a simple slideshow with iMovie or Canva. For such applications, you only need to import the images and add your music and transitions. These apps have basic settings and are easy to use. In order to export, I simply select my album, click on the export button, and then I can choose the format the names, um, the size, the um, metadata that I want to associate to the images, and hit the export button. To create a more sophisticated slideshow, Pito lets you export your photo selection directly to the Photomagico software to refine your slideshow in detail. Indeed, Photomagico offers numerous advanced features like the ability to animate each slide independently the ability to add layers of content to the slides and much, much more. So let's do it. I simply select all the images of my selection and I drag them into the work folder in the Photomagico workspace. This will open a window where I can configure my slideshow. I will give it a title. I can add some metadata. I can decide if I want to animate slides. Let's take that option. And I will, for now, uh, avoid having any overlays on my images. I will select some audio from my desktop. 
and hit the create document. This will open for Magico with a brand new document that contains all my slides. And as you can see, since I animated the slides, there are some standard um, can burn effects that are applied to the slide. Here I have a panorama and uh, the animation is a, is a simple pan and zoom across my images. For each of the images I can configure various aspects of the animation. And here is my fully configured slideshow with animation, transitions, sound effects. The credits too are configured with um, all the data that comes from my images. Now if you're in Photomagico and you realize you're missing a shot, it's really straightforward to get it. Quickly go back to Picto and search for it. So let's suppose I want to add some hot spring images. Here I have a few. Let me sort them by date so I can see the how this actually unfolds. Um, maybe I'm going to take this one and find all the similar images. Show them all so I get all the hot spring images and sort them by date so I can see them in the sequence. Let's select this one. And simply drag it to the timeline. So when Photomagico tells me when some images are too big, and this is simply because Picto here is giving me the highest resolution possible so I can scale down all images to remove those little warnings. Let's get another one. I really want an image of a green lake in a volcano. Yes, that's exactly the image I'm after. So I'm going to select it and drag it to my timeline. If on the other hand, it's important for me to give more information about the shot, I can do that by choosing the right option in Photomagico. Let's create a new slideshow here with just those four images. Drag it to the work folder. I'll give it a different title. And now I'm going to activate the exif overlay with camera lens and aperture and speed. I'm not going to animate the slides. As you can see, some extra layer was added. I can move around. That contains information about how my shot was taken. And here is my final animation. Of course, I can control the duration of each slide. I can animate a slide even though I started by not animating it. I can do whatever I want. Those text layers are added on top of my images for, for the maximum freedom. So once I've checked that everything is alright, I can of course play it in full screen or share it as a file to YouTube and to a number of common formats. And of course, if I want to really control uh, the best quality possible, I have all these options available to me. 
if I go back to Picto, I can see all the slideshows that I've created in my workspace. They come with a thumbnail, which is a mosaic of all the images inside. And if I simply want to edit them, I can do that by launching them from within Picto. We've reached the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it helped make creating your slideshows easier. Please share your feedbacks in the comments and subscribe to our channel. It means a lot to us. It's time for you now to create your most beautiful slideshows and tell your story. I'll see you in another video. Goodbye.